So I volunteer over at um, the Coastal Studies Lab with quite a few other people here in the room. And one of the items that we have there is a touch tank. And the kids absolutely love that touch tank, but not only the kids, the teachers that come along too love to touch those critters also. So with that, I also um, work at the Behind the Gates with the East Foundation out at the El Sao's Ranch in February. It's that same week that we're going to have our luncheon. But um, I'm in charge of the touch tank there, and I thought, and it's the same thing. The children love it, but the adults are always, oh, can I touch? Can I do it too? And their hands are in there all over the place. So I thought, well, you know, let's do that. Well, then I had to think, well, will I be able to get some critters? Will the weather be nice to get out there so that I can get out and fetch some critters? So I did, we did on Wednesday, Paul and myself and Elisa Velador, who is the educator for the East Foundation. Um, she showed me how to do it, showed us how to do it, and we had a blast. So today's presentation is not up on the screen, Robert. You'll just have to follow me around. <laughs> but it's called Exploring the Water's Edge. So everything that I'm going to share today, I'll bring this around. Everything that I'm going to share today um, we got right at the water's edge. We collected right at the water's edge. So this picture is actually from uh, the little boat ramp out there at Children's Beach behind the amphitheater on South Padre Island. So um, with that, I'll go ahead and begin. So we have our touch tank over here. You can just turn your chairs around this way because this is where I'll be now. And then after I kind of tell you just a couple facts about each little critter that I have, then you can all come up here and kind of play. <laughs> so uh, the first critter I have here is, um, let's see here, let's go with, I'm hoping I still have my little sponge. I think this is the sponge right here. So there's a little orange thing in here, not very large, and it's actually a sea sponge. And I would not have noticed it at all, but as soon as we put the net in the water and brought this up, you know, Elisa was like, oh, you got a sponge. And so I have a little sponge in here, and a few of the facts that I have about the sponge, it's that it's one of the world's simplest multicellular living organism. It's actually considered an animal and not a plant. Um, they grow and reproduce and survive much the same way as plants do. So um, they don't have any central nervous system. They have no digestive system, no circulatory <coughs> system, and no organs. So here's this little sponge. I mean, there's tons of sponges out there. It's described actually as a group of single cells that all work together. So when you come up here, you kind of can just come in here and pick up the little sponge. It really doesn't do anything. <laughs> it doesn't move around or wiggle or anything, but it's a cool thing to have in our little tank here. The next um, item I have, I believe I have two of these. We found clams. Nope. One. Oh, yeah. Two full clams, and I have not seen them come out of here yet, but, oh, there's a little limpet stuck on that one. Hmm. Um, anyway, uh, we did pull out two clams. I have not seen their little siphon come out or their little foot come out, but there's no dirt really in here for them to do anything with. So um, I do have two clams in here. Some fun facts about our clams are that it's a, biv oh, a bivalve mollusk. Um, it spends most of its life halfway buried in the sand of the seafloor, and that's why I think he had, they haven't come out. Um, they have a very powerful burrowing foot. When um, I did the um, angel wings, remember how they could dig so, 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 so deep? The clams don't dig as deep. They're just a little ways under. Um, some clams have a life cycle of one year. Others can last many, many, many years. Um, it consists of two um, calcareous shells or valves, um, and they're uh, joined with a hinge down here at the bottom with a flexible ligament, and um, all are filter feeders. So these are all filter feeders, all of the clams. So two little clams in there that you'll be able to look at. I also have some little blennies in here. Here, I'll just pick up this big one. But there's three, there's two smaller ones. So Blenny is a, a little fish. Oh, oh. I'm gonna let him jump back in there, but you'll be able to pick him up. Um, so Blenny is actually a term for a lot of different tiny little fish. 
So I don't know which particular blenny this is. It was just called a blenny, but that's a common name for many types of little fish. And they're usually marine fishes found um, in tropical or cold seas. So pretty much anywhere. Um, they're generally bottom dwelling fish in very shallow water, which is right at the water's edge where exactly we were. And they are algae eaters. Like most everything that's at the edge, they're pretty much all algae eaters. Okay, fun ones, the snails. So the snails in here, yep, that's a snail. So you'll be able to tell a snail because their little foot will be out here and it'll be stuck <laughs> to the bottom. And then the minute you pick it up, sometimes you'll be, up, be able to actually see the little snail that's in the shell. And other times it takes its little door and closes up. So you'll feel this little hard surface right here. And that's called the, um, the, um, yes, that. <laughs> what did you just say? A perculum. A perculum. I know, I, I'm like, I had it, and I actually have an operculum here from a little larger snail that you can look at. So that's just an operculum there. So I'll leave I that up there. The yeah, <laughs> well the foot is actually inside. Yeah. This is like yeah. its little door. Its little door. So a snail is an invertebrate. Um, they have a soft body. Let me pick that little guy up again. There's a couple of different snails in here, so you'll be able to kind of dig through and see what you find. Um, a soft body, it's part of the mollusk family and they grow their own shells for protection. So you know you've seen hermit crabs who change shells. The snails, this is their home. They have built this shell themselves. They live about 25 years and they move using that little foot that you were talking about that comes out. They have rows of teeth called radula and um, that they use to scrape the food with. So they're out there looking for algae also. They can actually be herbivores, carnivores, or omnivores, but they, main, they feed mainly on sea plants and algae. So that's our little sea snail. A couple of them there. Okay, another fun little animal we have in here are some, if you can catch them. These are tiny, so it's okay to pick them up. The bigger they get, you don't want to pick them up because they have pinchers. <laughs> but it's, um, I have, I think, three little baby blue crabs in here. And if you can't get it with that, I do have a net. And then you can pick it up and then put it um, in your hand with the... I just have to get it because they're just kind of fun. So a little crab. <laughs> um, so three little baby crabs that you can kind of play with. They are also an invertebrate. They're similar to hermit crabs, but they don't hide in a shell and they have a different body shape. So they're not like hermit crabs who hide in the shells. These are just crawling around all over, usually underneath the sand. So we scraped and pulled those up. They do have pinchers, and when you have a little larger one last year at Behind the Gates, we had one about this big. And the kids, you know, I said, okay, you can touch everything except for that little blue crab. And I showed them which one it was. Well, guess what? You know, <laughs> don't touch it. They're going to touch it. They're like, ouch. You know? So they were pinching pretty good. Um, they have swimming appendages and are very fast, fast, fast swimmers, as you could see from when I had my hand in there. Oh, and this little, let's see. Um, just to let you know, we put some shrimp in here yesterday, some dead shrimp. That's why I kept that shrimp oh, from your shrimp. fishing trip yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. So we chopped it up and some of the animals, you can actually watch them eating the shrimp right now. So that's kind of cool. Okay, next one. I guess I didn't realize we had so many, but I have a whole lot of little hermit crabs. And usually when they pick them up, they hide back in the shell. And so uh, it's, it's fun to watch. This one's a nice big one. <laughs> but he went back into a shell. But if you hold it long enough, he'll bring his little feet out mm -hmm. of the shell and you'll be able to um, look at that. Don't try to pull the hermit crab out of the shell. They hold on with their tail. And um, they, you cannot get those little, those little mm -hmm. crabs out of there. They hold on very, very tightly with their tail. Um, one of our friends was telling a story yesterday um, about she had found this beautiful shell on the beach and it had this animal in it. So she wanted to get this animal out of there. So here was this little hermit crab and she's just pulling and I'm like, oh gosh, you know, she just didn't really know. So she said, that little thing would not come out of there. And I said, no, he's not going to come out of there. So anyway. But you anyway, got to say that 
She tried to use a pair of pliers. Well, yes, yeah. that's right. She tried to use pliers. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> so anyway, um, they are, hermit crabs are invertebrates, and we have a few of those in here. They're related to shrimp and lobsters. Um, this group of animals is called crustaceans. Um, they live inside of a shell that was actually created by a snail. So I was showing you the snails beforehand. So after the snail dies, the shell becomes empty and the little hermit crab moves in. Um, and then they hold on to it with their tail. Then as they grow, they need to find a bigger shell. So they leave the shell and they go find another little shell that they're going to live in until they outgrow that one. So sometimes you can have some nice, great, big hermit crabs. They have pinchers for defense, um, capturing their prey, and also to use to bring their food to their mouth. They're omnivores. Guess what they eat? Algae <laughs> and dead fish, um, and dead fish and dead shrimp. Um, they're not picky, actually. They'll eat whatever's available, but of course their favorite food is the algae and the dead shrimp and the dead fish. They, um, there's about 1,100 different species of hermit crabs. Whoever would have known, right? Um, despite being hermits, they're actually social animals. And usually you'll see them, well, I'm not going to say usually because I've never seen them in pairs. But <laughs> they're often seen in pairs or in small groups. Um, and they can live up to 10 years. So the little hermit crabs, and this one's a nice one in here. Is that a banded tulip? Thing? I think it is. Yeah, yes. that is. So that I is did go tulip. into, yes, yeah, so when you yeah. come through, you know, talk about the kind of shells they are to everybody because I didn't have time to go through and say, oh, so this one's a banded tulip, <laughs> this one's this, this one's that. So, um, but this is where all your, sh all the beautiful shells that you're collecting, this is where they're coming from are all of these animals. So I will say that one. So the limpets, let's see, the little limpets. They're down here, and they're usually stuck to the bottom also. Um, the limpets that we have are actually, um, in the book that I use, they're called true limpets, and then the keyhole limpets have the hole on the top. And so um, that's what I have um, for the limpets. They're a volcano-shaped shell, and you've probably found some, you know, some shells like that on the beaches. They um, graze on algae covered rocks. Mm -hmm. so, more algae eaters and that's why we're finding them near the shore. Um, the limpet's foot acts like a um, suction cup, much the same as some of those other animals. Um, it's combined with a glue, I, I have to read this, it's com combined with a glue that the animal secretes to hold it firmly on a rock despite the pounding waves. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's, it stays, it holds tight to protect it from predators also. So where did I put my computer? I wanted to show you where we found um, the limpets. We kind actually, like barnacles. pardon me? Yeah. Kind of like barnacles. Yes, kind of like barnacles. So we actually found the limpets out on the jetties. We walked out on the jetties on this beautiful calm day. <laughs> where, uh, yeah, so, you know, we're walking in the middle and we're getting splashed with the waves. But the, but the limpets like to be down here you know, right at the water's edge there, down at the bottom. So Paul's down there on his stomach, you know, pulling limpets <laughs> off the off the rocks down there. He did a great job on grabbing. I'm like, yes, I want some limpets. Yeah, get some limpets. <laughs> so, so she never was, got down there, by the way. Just no, I stayed up on the rocks because those waves were coming. I cannot get up fast enough anymore. You know, you used to be able to jump up. No, it takes me four days to climb up out of a, you know, a kneeling position. So um, Paul's very good at jumping right up. So he went down and got our no, limits got for wet. us. So another um, animal that I wanted to share that's on here that you can't actually bring is the anemone. So back at that children's beach, let me go, this was just absolutely um, a treat. So we found a spot where we found just this beautiful anemone garden. I mean, I'm, I'll bring this around. I, you know, it's just not working up there with this old oh, wow. computer. But yes, yeah, so that's full of little anemones and other things growing. I'm not sure what they are. Tony probably yeah. knows. Mm. <laughs> Can't see him. Yeah. I'll show you. So yes, it was just, I just could sit there and watch forever. So the little things coming out, I don't know if those are sponges or 
the little orange things. Yeah, I've seen them. I'm just they may be anemones that are closed up. Oh, that That's could be. That's probably what they are. Oh, that could be. Small that could ones. be. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was really cool. I mean, that was just like a great part of our treasure hunt. <laughs> So I didn't know if you yep, saw that. Right there. But yeah. just a whole garden <laughs> of anemones. So, um, so an anemone, uh, let me take you to the next slide because I have actually a close-up. Um, I wanted to just show you the huge garden. And then here's the picture of them a little closer. So I don't know if you've ever tried to touch an anemone, but when you put your finger in there, you know, they're like this. They go psh, just as fast as... Mm -hmm. can be. We only did that yeah. once. Um, you cannot take an anemone from where it's at. So we were really looking for a rock that we could just bring the rock, but they were really stuck to large <laughs> structures. Um, they're, um, they attach themselves to this large structure or any structure with uh, this tube, tube-like. And if you disconnect that tube from the structure that they're attached to, it will die. So we didn't even um, try it, but it was still really fun to just sit there and watch and just look. It's, it's a long, wiggly thing, so. Yeah, really cool. Really, really cool. I love to watch this. Yes. And really, you don't even have to stick your finger there. No. You can just get close to it, and it's and it yeah. It's I mean, like it's just so fast. In, yes, they go all the way into where you really can't even see the darn thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that was another really cool thing. I, let me see if I. They're usually well attached. Um, it's recommended that you simply observe this beautiful animal. Um, it has that column-shaped body encircled by those tentacles at the top, and. They're, they come in a lot of different colors. They come in beautiful greens and oranges and reds and yellows. Paul's seen tons of anemones on his diving trips in all those really, really pretty colors. So with that, we'll come to um, kind of the star of our show. And I'm going to have Paul come up here because this was kind of his favorite part. Oh, come up here. <laughs> Small applause. So just, just as a, um, yes. <laughs> so he was awesome. He was a great collector out I've there. Never touched these. But so here I've been telling him, yeah, I said we hold these sea urchins, you know, for the kids and the kids get to hold them and everything. And he says, I'm not gonna touch a sea urchin, you know. So he's out there. Well guess what? He's in there, the waves are coming and he's down in those waves getting those Living sea urchins work. with it, and then he's holding his this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> So he's like, can I do the sea urchins? I said, yes, you can do the sea urchins. So go ahead and hold one up. Oh, you got the other one out. Okay. Yes. I we had one sea urchin that did not want to come loose from the bucket. So, but Paul eventually got him. So it's an invertebrate. It's related. This is so cool because it's related to the sea star, the sand dollars, and the sea cucumbers. Because, and we'll talk about um, why, how you can tell that they're related in just a minute. They have tiny tube feet um, on the bottom with suction cups, and you'll be able to come up and hold it. Um, little suction cups that they just stick to whatever they're at. Um, plus, we found some really pretty colored ones. This one I called a blonde one. Anyway, um, let's see. The suction cups on the feet help them move and hold on to rocks and sand and other surfaces. Um, they're omnivores, and guess what they eat? Algae and dead fish and shrimp. So um, yesterday we had them in their bucket by themselves, and we put some shrimp in there, and there was tons of poop. <laughs> you know, I mean, they had definitely um, enjoyed their shrimp yesterday. So just to let you know, yeah, it's okay. Um, I'll continue on here. So on the bottom here, and you'll be able to come up here and take a look. And I have a magnifying glass if you want to even look closer. But this is where his little mouth is. So that's his little mouth, and in his mouth are five little teeth. And so that's where he eats, and then there's a little hole on the top, and that's where he poops. 
<laughs> so, so kind of, you know, kids love that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, so his little mouth area is sometimes referred to as Aristotle's lantern because back in the day, um, Aristotle's the one who described this mouth area on the sea urchin. So let's see here. Where am I? So lots of information on sea urchins. Okay, so um, let's see. Oh, they have spines. You know, you've seen the spines that cover their um, cover their body. And um, so there's a lot of different species around the world. Some are venomous. The, t the sea urchins that we have here in Texas are not. So it's okay if we hold them very gently. You sure would not want to step on one. They're very, very, very sharp. But it's just good to know that these are not venomous. These are called... Um, Texas Park, Parks and Wildlife call these oh, red sea urchins. There are red sea urchins and purple sea urchins and green sea urchins and all these different colored of sea urchins. And sometimes people in Texas will refer to them as purplish because they're kind of a purpley color. But usually the, um, the term purple urchin um, refers more to the urchins in California because those are the urchins that the sea otters eat. And so when the sea otter population declines, then you get um, tons of sea urchins and they eat everything in sight. And all the kelp, they like the kelp forest, and so they eat everything in sight and it becomes what they call um, a, an urchin barren. And so, um, so I continue to call these red sea urchins. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, those spines also help protect it from predators, of course. They live to be about 70 years. Oh um, and the, okay. Okay, so then, so let's say a sea urchin dies. He loses all of his spines, and sometimes on the beach, you might find what is left of that sea urchin. And so um, this is actually called a test. And so it's kind of like the exoskeleton of the sea urchin. But on this, you can really tell, because you can't really tell. You might be, when you look up close, you might be able to see, but you can see the star, sh the star shape on the sea urchin. So you can see how it's related to that sea star and the sand dollar. All of those things that have the five. Beautiful, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. How, how big, how big will those yeah. red ones get? I, you know, I don't know. I think those are about the average size. When we got those, I'll show you the picture where we got those. I, I have another slide with that. Elisa said, oh, those are some nice big ones. Oh, okay. So I'm assuming that's probably um, about the size. This is not from a red, this one is not from around here. I think I got this in either Florida or North Carolina or someplace. I, I know. They're just just gorgeous. That's the biggest I've ever seen. This one? Yeah. Oh yeah, well this one. Yeah, they're like, around I here. They're not that so big. Yeah. Yeah. So it's along with like this larger one, and I'll leave oh, that out yeah. here, um, I also have a whole bunch of really tiny ones that I found in South Caicos, or in Turks and Caicos. So um, they're kind of fun to look at, and you can see the star pattern on all of those. But I'll just leave these out so that you can, so I don't drop them. <laughs> and you can look at these when you come up there also. So tiny ones, aren't they? But these I found on the beach. And I asked Elisa, I said, you know, we have so many sea urchins out there on the jetties. How come I never find their tests? You know, and she says, that's a really good question, perhaps. They just get broken up from the waves and everything. So, which is a shame because I would love to find one, you know, locally. Mm -hmm. It would be really neat. Has anybody found one locally? Pieces, but never a whole one. You have? Mm -hmm. Of course. Right there. Yeah, I've seen nice. pieces. Well, I have plenty of sea urchins. Sea urchins that you found locally? Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? And I have some where, the, where their tines did not fall out. I've got really? a couple of those that are there. Wow. Back, and they've been in there for 20 years and oh. they're still fine. Huh, that is awesome. You'll have to bring them and share those. Yes. Yes. And they so, get harvested for their eggs here sometimes. Here they do? Yeah. I know in other parts of the world yeah. they do. Yeah, but here also. Well, I didn't know mm -hmm. that. For mm -hmm. eating? Mm -hmm. To eat, yes. They're a delicacy. Like yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. That'd yeah. be good. So, oh, <laughs> do you want chicken eggs? Um, <laughs> let me see here what I have. For next week. 
Okay, so all the creatures that we that we collected were either, um, or, or all the creatures except for the um, sea urchins and the, the little limpets, we collected from the little beach area and the dock. We just scraped and, and dug in the sand and did all kinds of things like that. And then the other ones, the sea urchins and the limpets, we found out on the um, jetties. Mm -hmm. So we had a beautiful walk out on the jetties and we found the mother load, or, um, whoops, Elisa said, oh, it's gonna be a good day because we found the mother load of sea urchins um, in this one spot that was getting cremated by waves, you know, but look at all of those in that one spot. Okay. So she said, well, let's walk further down because there wasn't, it, there was no easy way to get down there without, I mean, getting the waves over your head. It was, they were down there pretty deep, but just, just a huge collection of um, sea urchins. So we walked further down and um, found some more down there. And Paul, of course, he said, I'll just, I'll just check the waves. He said, the big one doesn't come until every eighth one, you know, so he's out there waiting. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my God, I'm going to lose him. I just know I'm going to lose him. But, but he got him. <laughs> he got him and he's still with us. So <laughs> that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, did you see that? You all saw that, right? Yeah. yeah. Did y'all see the that. black sea urchins with the long, long spines on them? Um, no, we didn't. We just saw these. Yeah. So we have black ones here too. <clears throat> and those spines are like really long, right? I, I think I've seen pictures of those. When I've scuba dived, I've seen some of those and they're yeah. really long they spines. Are, okay. And they're hard to well, get I don't, out because... I'm smart enough not to touch them. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's basically the information I wanted to share. So um, you're welcome to come up here and I, I call it just playing with the critters. They will go back into the ocean after we're done here. Um, but they're a lot of fun to look at and kind of look at close up with the magnifying glass and you can ask questions, but everything I know was on these cards. So. <laughs> but it'll, it'll make me probably go home and you know look for more answers if you have any questions.